Can't decide in torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, well, well. Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join us as we dissect the latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. the GSMC Movie Podcast, brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Stacey. And I'm your co-host, Sarah. And today we're talking about two movies about books. Books! Because Yay! We've just been <laughs> waiting, somehow, to do books on the movie podcast, because we secretly want to turn this into another... I, I We least. secretly want to turn everything into the book podcast. I kind of... Yeah. I don't yeah. even think it's that secret. No. It, it's Yeah, we, we've said it. We're, we're like terrible villains who reveal their plans. <laughs> Our, our evil plan to turn all the podcasts into book podcasts that you totally knew about weeks ago. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so anyways, the first movie today is Book Club, the mm -hmm. new, I'm not even quite sure how to describe it, <laughs> the new movie about women of a certain age who decide to get together to read uh, Fifty, 50 Shades, Shades of Grey, of Grey. Yeah. as you do when you reach a certain age. Yeah. So right. <laughs> anyway. I don't even want to read it now. I have read it. I've read the whole series. No comment. Okay. Um, and I, I was not doing this podcast when all those movies came out. So, yay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't well, seen them and I don't want to. The most recent one just just came out, didn't it? I, I, I just missed the last it, one? I think. Because okay. I right. think they always come out on Valentine's Day. Oh. Because that's totally what Valentine's Day is about. <laughs> totally. BDSM. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, in this movie, uh, the four characters played by Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, Mary Steenbergen Steen mm -hmm. and Candace Bergman. Uh, Bergman? Bergen. Bergen. Bergen, yes. Uh, Bergman, something else. Uh, <laughs> are four friends who've been friends since about college and have had this philosophical book club going for years and years. And Jane Fonda one day decides, hey, for this month, we're going to read... Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> okay. In our philosophical book club. Fi right. Why does she decide this? Just for... Just because? Well, it's, it's, I mean, obviously the movie's supposed to be set a few years ago because it's when Fifty Shades was still this big new buzz thing. Because um, as you see in the previews, she, you know, was like, oh, we started this book club to stimulate our minds. She's like, from what I hear, this book is quite stimulating. <laughs> so it's to that point where we clearly don't have the movies yet. Right. And whenever this is based. Um, and it's the book still just, you know, newish and popular. Um, so as you could sort of guess, because this is a book, I mean a book, <laughs> it's a movie about women of a certain age who are reading a book essentially about sex, relationships come into this. Mm -hmm. Each of the women has a sort of relationship quandrum. quandrum? Quandry? But I like quandrum. <laughs> <laughs> it's like quandry may and conundrum had a baby. Yes. Quandrum. Uh, a relationship quandrum that they're dealing with. Mary Steenburgen is married, but she feels that her she and her husband haven't really been passionate with each other and haven't had sex in a while. Jane Fonda's character is single and has never been married, and she likes it that way, but then an old flame oh. from her younger years shows up. Uh, Candace Bergen <laughs> is a federal judge and she's been divorced for like 18 years and so doesn't quite know how to date anymore. And Diane Keaton has two overprotective daughters and while dealing with them meets Andy Garcia, who is a pilot. Hmm. So they each have their own guy and their own problems, but come together over these books. Okay. So, and I've yeah. seen the previews and it looks like there's a lot of wine drinking and um Well I mean hot flashes. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's actually not too many hot flashes. I don't know, they just they all seem to be like, whew, not hot not just not hot flashes, just like moments of Well, I think that has, something. To, that has to do with fifty shades of grey. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say, but I couldn't okay. come up with the proper well, like they're women of a certain age. So when you say hot flashes, I'm thinking <laughs> no, actual I, I, menopause. I know, that. I know, but just like <laughs> 
you know, them fanning themselves. I couldn't think of yeah. the right, like, yeah, sorry. It's been a, it's been a long day. Yeah. So this movie, and I, I very quickly felt this probably within the first third, it, and it probably doesn't help that they start with the photo of them in college where they were evidently reading like Fear of Flying by Erica Zhang. Zhang. Mm-hmm. I, that was their first book club book. But it starts with this picture of them. And for some odd reason, the pictures that are made in this film all are just bad CGI. Oh, it's no. it's supposed to be them when they're younger. And I'm just like, that's the terrible And it's not like picture. there's not a million pictures of all of right. them when they were younger. Yeah. So it shouldn't have been too hard to Photoshop. And it's not like this is a hugely C- CGI movie. So it's you only have so much you have to CGI. Why can't you CGI <laughs> those pictures properly? Like, just wasn't enough budget but yeah evidently but because they start with this picture of them as four college students it reminded me a lot of the beginning of the first Wyatt's club which Mm. diane keaton is also in Mm -hmm. and her character in this is evidently also named diane oh and she dresses a lot it made me think of it was like oh so this is what annie hall would look like (laughs) <laughs> now right. this is essentially the now modern day annie hall it's she's literally lived i was like this feels like it's just diane keaton actually <laughs> and she's the narrator so but it really most, feels like we're just watching a movie about her i i feel like most diane keaton roles just feel yes. like diane keaton because no matter what her role is she still pretty much dresses the way she dresses yeah. and you know she's very always that same sort of nervous neurotic yeah. not not the one who will have the crazy plans but the one who might freak out but go along with it anyways but because of all that it felt like a this was first wives club part two except since there were four girls at the beginning and then one of them died we kind of retconned that but then b it was like so i feel like i'm actually watching diane keaton so i don't actually remember any of the other characters names and i just kept <laughs> thinking of them as the actresses names in my right. head so at one point there's a part where jane fonda and her old flame end up in a fountain for some odd reason oh sure like you do yes well she threw in a penny for a wish but he said her wish was a terrible wish so oh. it didn't count so he went in to get her penny back and then decided to splash her and so she while wearing a dress was like the proper thing to do here is to get in that fountain and splash him back right of but course my, my first thought is and i'm watching the, jane would you really get in that fountain with that and then we, why am i calling her what is her name <laughs> it's not jane but i have no clue what her name is right now and i'm thinking like oh candace bergen is a lawyer and i somehow can follow along in the movie that she's a federal judge but cannot remember her name <laughs> my soul. so it's just candace the judge in my head and i'm just like i'm I, I, what's reality again this is too much everything with diane Keaton feels so very much just like Diane Keaton that the rest of the film I'm just like I what <laughs> you had some you had some trouble with this with this watching um, yeah I, I feel bad for you yeah it was just it was a little it wasn't a terrible film um but when I saw it I'm pretty sure I was probably at least like 20 years younger than everybody else in my theater <laughs> right <laughs> because uh and th- it does that well it does deal with age and out and this is in the previous two that you know as women get older they're not supposed to be interested or sex or something and candace bergman says bergen i don't know why i keep wanting to say bergman uh says you know if that had been the case god wouldn't have done what he does to women's bodies and jane fonda's like talk for yourself and she's like well that was not god that was dr nasarian <laughs> yeah, but there's a, yeah there's a number of jokes about sex and there's a number of jokes about age and the age ones are pretty okay there's one where like someone says, oh, we're sure not spring flowers anymore. And Jane responds, yeah, we're more like potpourri. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I get it. I'm good with you with the age ones. But then the sex ones just feel, yeah, like. Forced? Not forced, but just like you couldn't come up with anything better. Like in one of them, and I'm not sure if this goes completely in the trailer, but you do see part of it. Mary character is watering plants while reading mm-hmm. which i'm like how do you do that wouldn't you either over water or not be able to turn a page or that seems like not the best time to be reading to me but she's reading the book while watering and she's like oh my and in her plants she has this little thing that's a moisture meter which goes immediately from dry to wet oh, and i'm like oh geez yeah okay got it but seriously like <sighs> okay so that's more like american pie right. almost you yeah. know it, like, felt, it felt like, like i was like the jokes were coming from like a raunchy 20 something movie but then we've got all these other jokes about you know being women over the age of 50 and i was like i there's a bit of a disconnect here did you did you have to do it with 50 shades of gray and that's the thing about this this movie is because it's really about age and can you still you know have a relationship 
as a woman after a certain age and should you want to Mm -hmm. you didn't need 50 shades of gray we don't start really getting into any sort of crazy sex games well and if they're going to read okay so they're reading all of these philosophical books for however many years it is and then they go to one that's so badly written i mean i know this isn't the book podcast but come on it's it, it I the, think the editing is terrible. <laughs> well, when Jane introduces that one, it seems that they didn't quite like the last one. So they don't always read great books. Okay. Um, but it's not clear what they read. It's just the book club started out philosophically. Started out. Okay. And since there is wine, we may be at some point, we we're like, let's just also read fun <laughs> books. And Jane being the sort of sex addict, not a sex addict, but she's definitely the one having most sex in this movie uh, is, of course, like, hey, let's read this book about sex. Okay. That actually kind of makes sense, but right. it just, yeah, you didn't need the Fifty Shades, and they evidently go through, like, all of them, it seems, in the book, even though you don't really, if you haven't read Fifty Shades of Grey, you're not going to get much info about Fifty Shades of Grey from this movie, other than that it's about sex, and there's people tying people up, because Mary's character says that at one point. <laughs> but if you didn't already know that, you, you know. Right. So if you haven't seen or read Fifty Shades, you're not going to get any new info in this movie whatsoever. So it's it's like, you didn't need this book. You could have done this with any book. You could have actually even done this with not a book club. Like, (laughs) right. Because these are four women who've known each other since college. Like, you could just have it be their friendship and have them starting with this dilemma of either Jane's old flame comes in or Mary feels she's not having sex and go from there. But they're, I would assume, maybe not, but it sounds like they're just trying to kind of ride on that momentum of Fifty Shades of Grey. Well, I think this may actually be based off of a book. Oh, Lord. Okay. Which then would have been riding off of the train of Fifty Shades of Grey. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Anyways, it was just sort of, yeah. And there were certain, the stories didn't feel all equally paid attention to in my mind. Right. Like Diane Keaton's story gets the most and she's the narrator. And of all the people in the film, even past the four women, uh, her guy is played by Andy Garcia. And I think he's the best thing in this film. He's a nice guy. It's almost like, dude, wait, do I have to get on a plane to meet a guy like you? Because I kind of will just go randomly fly somewhere. They, her daughters live in Arizona. It's like, I would be willing to fly to Arizona <laughs> if it meant meeting a guy like Andy Garcia in this film. Because he's he's great. He's he's suave. And he's really interested in Diane. And he's willing to put up with some of her craziness. And it's just like, dude, you are charming. You are absolutely charming. Just what? But then the other girls, like Mary's whole dilemma with her husband who just isn't interested in her sexually it seems anymore just felt sort of forced at Mm. times Mm -hmm. and jane's dilemma i can get why they're behind but i just i liked her and i did not really care for her male counterpart at all even though i feel for him and i want him to get her at the end of the story because of the the history they have at the same time i just sort of like I don't care. (laughs) It's like, you haven't really made me care too much in this movie. I'm more just frustrated with her being, you know, self, self self-defeating, not self-defeating, just like not helping herself. You're your own worst enemy sort of thing. Right. So hmm, I'm just wondering if it is a book and I can't find if it is based Mm -hmm. on a book. I I wonder what, because you always get more in a book, obviously, because you're getting more of the author's insight. So then I wonder if any of that, any of the issues that you have maybe are explained better in the book. I don't know. Right? Like, I wonder if in the book they actually hop to the different characters' point of views. Mm Mm-hmm. Because we see them, and we definitely see things that only they would know because they're, like, the only person in the room. And so unless they tell their girlfriends, the girlfriends wouldn't know. Right. But... Yeah, I don't know. And then, like, Candace Bergen's character felt very just not paid attention to because she doesn't even have, like, a main guy she's dealing with. She decides to try online dating. And that okay. makes for some interesting things because one of her dates is uh, Richard Dreyfus, and then another is uh, Wally Shaw. Wally Shaw, and I love him. <laughs> I love him, too. But the character he plays in this, ad, when we meet him, the situation she's in, is just like, oh, my gosh, stop talking, stop talking. <laughs> oh, man. But she just felt sort of an afterthought for a good portion of the film. And I get, mm-hmm. you know... And again, I I think part of that is because so much of it made me think of First Wives Club in my head, that there's sort of this comparing of, you know, 
the movie you made 20 years ago and your life now 20 years because it still feels like Diane Keaton, First Wives Club felt much more equal mm. with dealing with the, the this- and it only had three women instead of four, but with dealing with each of their sort of uh, problems going on in their life. Right. Whereas this one felt so much more heavily on Diane and a bit more on Jane. And then Mary and especially Candace felt rather left behind that it was just like, when we finally get back to their story, I'm just like, oh, yeah, that's right. You have things going on in your life, too. You exist outside this book club. I, I kind of forgot about that. Huh. You exist outside this book club. It kind of feels, especially with Candace's character, that like she only pops into existence when this book club is here to talk right. about how ridiculous it is they're reading these books and women of a certain age shouldn't care about love or sex or any of that. And then once the book club's over, she doesn't exist until the book club meets again. Like, <laughs> like I she's really, a hologram or something. <laughs> right? I really kind of forgot about her whole story as it was happening until we get back. That was just like, oh, yeah, that's right. And you're doing online. I'm oh, with you. I, I needed a refresher, but I'm with you now. Huh. So yeah, I, just, it's okay. It's an okay movie. It's not. Did you go, did you see that? Did you take your mom or your grandma? I did not. No. Okay. I saw this by myself and I actually saw it, it. I'm not quite sure what's going on with movies nowadays where it was on a Thursday, even though this movie came out on Friday, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like a special showing. It didn't say anything special. It just was like a regular showtime that I could go to. So I was like okay, I'll go on a Thursday after work. And again, yeah, there was about maybe 15, less than 20 people in the audience. Mm-hmm. And they were all probably at least like twice my age. But they all seem to enjoy it pretty well. So yeah, okay. So yeah, it's okay. I mean, it's got a great cast. I, I can't, you know, I don't know if that's damning it with faint praise, but <laughs> <laughs> it does have a great cast when you just look at it. So on that really great note, <laughs> uh, we're going to take a short break and we'll be back. Stay tuned. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Movie Podcast. Our second book-related movie on this not-book podcast (laughs) is Ex Libris, New York Public Library, which is a documentary about the New York Public Library. Cool. That was what I thought at first. Because, I mean, the New York Public Library is probably one of the most famous libraries in the world. Even Mm -hmm. if you don't know it, you've at least seen the thing with the lions lions, in the front. Huge library because it's New York. Mm -hmm. Um, So I was like, okay, cool. This will be great. There's that whole, there's a whole part in uh, the movie Ghostbusters where they're in the library. You know, I mean, lots of cool stuff. Oh, we're going to talk about that later. Oh, cool. Uh, Maybe not, but we're, I mean, maybe not cool, but we're going to talk about that later. Oh, dang. So this is a documentary and this thing is nearly three and a half hours long. Ooh. Which wouldn't bother me. The timing didn't even... I was like, oh, it's three and a half hours long about the New York Public Library? Oh, we must just go through, like, the whole history. Right. There's secret passageways or something, you know? And it's the library about New York. So it's, of course, got to have a lot to talk about because it's in the city of millions and millions of people and you have to serve all these millions. Okay. No. That's not what we get to. There's no narrative in this film. None? None. It is. It's just film. It's just different things that have been filmed and put together, and I'm not even sure if... So there's no narrative, no narration, no nothing? Nothing. 
It starts off with the film of some speaker interview, whatever, in the library. And wherever they are, they're like in the main lobby or hallway. So everyone's standing. They're not even sitting while listening to this guy being interviewed for some reason. And then it's just different clips of different board meetings and different things happening at different branches of the library and nothing, no narration whatsoever. And I the just critics like, gave it 96% on Rotten Tomato. I don't, I don't know how. I gave it <laughs> <laughs> an audience score 61%. So yeah, somebody's seeing something that you weren't seeing, but I don't know what it is, but I mean, it's evidently. So I left, I, I kept it playing even though I sort of tuned out after about the first 20 minutes. But I left it playing just to see if, like, maybe it's just got a really slow buildup and then we're going to get to something that actually has, like, some sort of storyline running through it. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, it's, it's not quite clear even when this was filmed. There's a couple of things mentioned about 2015 and what we're doing in 2015. And evidently part of the theme, if there is a theme of the library, is sort of how the library which is however long however old it is can transition to serving the population in the 21st century with technology and that whole thing but it was just like what is this what is the point of this <laughs> <laughs> like there were there were only a couple of things that i actually found interesting there's one part and it's i can't even tell you where because i i very quickly tuned out so i'm not even sure what time it had been by this point uh where there's a film of this guy who's he starts talking about Alice in Wonderland and something about stories and how we don't want to tell boring stories. And then he goes into like a spoken word performance. OK. And I actually found the spoken word performance interesting. I was like, OK, I, if you had come to my local library, I would have maybe been upset that I had missed that if I hadn't gone. Mm hmm. And then we move on to something else, and I'm bored for another hour or so. <laughs> I'm I'm reading. I'm currently like mm. scanning through an article in the New Yorker, mm -hmm. um, and it said, you know, the movie is three hours and seventeen minutes, yep. which is um, short because the, the the library has ninety two branches. And yeah. So this guy thinks the movie should be longer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just telling you, you know, that, that it could have been worse. It could have. <laughs> it could have. And I mean, it's it seems almost like a really long, not, you know comprehensively edited like commercial for the library to be like this is why you should come into the new york library here's what we offer because you see different speakers you see them doing there's a couple of sort of homework help things where people are helping children do their homework you see them doing something with programming robots there's a thing about uh hiring and recruiting and the, how to do a job search in the 21st century mm -hmm. and so it sounds like these are the services the library offers but it's just is it is there's it nothing to draw me in is it to do with like the you know how libraries are evolving in terms of the digital age that's is, kind is that of how it's kind of at times that's what the board meetings are and there's three or four i think board meetings that uh the filmmaker was able to film where they're talking about that about okay here's our budget and it's not the budget we would like so how can we best use that budget when we've got these projects and there's something about being able to take home like a Wi-Fi hot, hot spot. And I think something about like they gave out cell phones or something so people could have access to the internet. And so that's a topic at times, but then the rest of it is really sort of, so here's where the Ghostbusters thing came in. Okay. So there's both, it made me think of both Ghostbusters and Ghost. And okay. that if you've seen Ghost, the Patrick Swayze movie, you know the ghosts are just sort of there, like they can't all, they don't know how at first to like mess with physical things and make them happen. They're just sort of having things happen around them without mm -hmm. being able to make a choice about that. Right. It made me think if you were the ghost from the beginning of Ghostbusters, that library ghost, but in that sort of way from the ghost Patrick Swayze movie where you don't really get to choose things, if you couldn't even choose when you were like conscious of the world around you mm -hmm. and you were that library ghost stuck in the library, it would be this movie. It's just like, <laughs> it's just oh, like that's if, awful. If you just randomly like were floating through Ghost World and didn't know what was happening at times, and then suddenly came back to the world and were in like the library board meeting, and then you went out of consciousness again and then came back and there's a speaker. It's that. It feels like that. Like I'm just a random ghost who doesn't have control over when I can pay yes. attention and cannot escape a few branches of the New York Public Library. That's that's my whole world. Wow. As a ghost. That is exactly wow. what it I felt mean, like. Now, in theory, 
spending your eternity in the New York Public Library sounds Should cool until you, until you describe it like that. Well, when you can't actually do anything and you can just sort of observe, then no, it's not fun. Right. It's like, it would be fine if, hey, I can spend my whole ghost to just reading. reading. Yeah. But if I can't actually, you know, have any action or any not objective, but do anything I actually want to do and I can just sort of be here right. and observe and not leave. That sounds yeah, terrible. Yeah, that does sound terrible. And like for me, the coolest thing in this film, and it's somewhere in like the probably the last third because it took a while to get there, is I want to say it's the return system. Okay. I think it's the return system or the request system. Like if you request books mm-hmm. from the library and they send it to your specific branch, I think it's one or the other. At first, I thought it was a donation system, but then they're later scanning it because you see them do it where there's these workers putting books on a conveyor belt and the books have to be a certain way up so they can get scanned and they get scanned really fast. And then the conveyor belt is sort of like, I guess this is sort of like how airport conveyor belts work where it's got different shoots it can go off into. Okay. And as it goes along, it decides when it wants to shoot the book. Uh Uh-huh. I'm not making it sound as cool as it looked. I thought it looked really cool, and I wish we had stayed for that, and we only are there for a few minutes, <laughs> and then we go off and do something else boring. But I was like, that is fascinating. I would love <laughs> Take to get me back. <laughs> right? I would love to get the behind the scenes of that. Mm-hmm. And then we just move on. And I mean, we do see some behind the scenes things. You see a behind the scenes of uh, them taking pictures of like really old books and pictures, uh, like paintings or whatever, mm-hmm. to digitize them. You very early in the film are in an office with people who are on the library, like call helpline mm-hmm. or something. And that was kind of funny because there's the guy, you, you don't hear what the callers are saying. You only hear what the employees are saying because they've got headsets. Right, right. And the guy is talking to someone and he's like, well, no, no, because a unicorn is not a real animal. <laughs> <laughs> a unicorn is, is a mythological <laughs> <laughs> to someone. I'm like, how did you get to this call nice. where the person doesn't know a unicorn's not real? And how do, can I get to such calls? That's like, awesome. what? So you know, there was that, but then, yeah. You know what I think? Hmm. I think you need to make a documentary about the New York City Library because then you could you could show all the th- all those behind the scene things that you want to see. Right. And, and yeah. Like, I just, I want to know. And I mean, I'm always a little off with like critics who like, you know, sort of strange indie films that I in the film and just think what the heck was that and why did I just sit through an hour and a half or two hours of what was that and they're like oh my god that was beautiful that was brilliant that was amazing possibly the best film of the year and I'm just like what yeah this feels like that like yeah I saw that a lot of critics really liked it so I thought it was gonna like tell a great story and really get into things that you didn't know about the library previously and all that jazz and I just, oh, it was so dull. It was, I, was, I was on the computer for 90% of the time while this was happening. Okay, and you know why this makes me even extra sad? Mm. Is because there are so many people out there who claim that they, they hate reading. Right. Like, I, I, oh, I just don't like to read. And then obviously, I mean, they're probably not going to watch a movie about the, the right? New York City Library. But if they did, it's not going to encourage them to be interested in books. Right. I mean... Come on, we gotta, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, it almost feels like if the dude just went through the security footage camera, but had much better camera angles. Nice. It's like, which is why, again, I jumped to, it's a ghost who doesn't have control over when they're conscious of the world. Because he's clearly, he got permission to film. He's filming board meetings that the public's not into, but he's also filming things the public can be. And he's filming the people who are there and which maybe Sally Field was there or someone who looked like Sally Field was in one of the early speaking (laughs) things, but she didn't speak. She was just in the audience. So he's got pretty good camera angles and you can hear what people are saying, but it was just not interesting to me. And I'm just like, the library should be fascinating. And the fact that they kind of have to, you know, find a way to appeal the library to New Yorkers makes me sad. And so I want this book to help that. And no, Mm. just... No, if if you're at all considering even possibly giving your local library or the New York Public Library or just reading in general a chance, do not watch this film. <laughs> okay, well let me let me for for people who maybe you know don't watch documentaries or have mm. never heard of uh, Frederick Wiseman. I'm not sure I've ever seen a documentary by Frederick Wiseman, although I, I, I've watched documentaries. So mm. he has been using the same um, strategy since the '60s. 
Oh. Um, so he did one about a mental hospital, basic training in the army during mm. the Vietnam War, one about high school, about public education. So he chooses a subject, usually an institution that's either resisting change or leaning into it. Then he explores it with multiple cameras, watching mm -hmm. what happens in and around various rooms and buildings, generating mountains of raw footage, then editing them and figuring out how to arrange it all. So every movie he's uh. ever done, apparently, is, the exact, is, is not the exact same thing, obviously, but it's mm. filmed in the same way. See, so I feel that could work for some things. Like I know they've done things like that with troubled high schools before mm -hmm. where it's just, Hey, we were let into this high school and we filmed it and we didn't specifically, we didn't tell anyone to do anything. We didn't tell the kids to say anything. We just saw it as it was. And then went from there. But I guess for me, for most documentaries, I need at least a narrative, mm -hmm. a sort of, mm -hmm. okay, A happened, and then B, and then maybe we jump to D, but we can see how D connects, and then we continue with E, and this instead felt like A, V, F, X, H, Z, like, <laughs> I'm not even sure, like, timing-wise even, I, I'm not sure if it was in order, I'm not sure if it was in order from the branches, because we do start at the main branch, and then we go out to some other branches, but I'm not sure if, you know, this one scene at this outside branch is then connected to this next scene. What branch are we in? Because I don't know the New York Public Library system, so right. I have no clue where we are. It's just like, I can't follow, and you're not giving me anything to want me to follow. Wow. Just, I, I don't know why it was so loved by critics. I just, yeah. Yeah, interesting. So unless you somehow understand those critics who understand films that don't seem understandable, <laughs> maybe stay away from this film and go to the library. In fact, just go to the library and, and experience find a good for book. yourself. Yeah, that yeah. would be much better. Take the three and a half hours you would do from this movie and go to the library even for like 30 minutes. Libraries are awesome. Just go hang out, be surrounded by the books. I don't even need to check anything out. I just like to go wander. Yes. And on that note, we're going to end for today. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Movie Podcast. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to movies music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program